Hey everyone, welcome back to Pawpaw's Workshop. As you can imagine, each and every day I get tons of emails and questions about different projects and how to do different things. Well, several years ago, I put together some bump stops that are used for the CNC machines such as this one. And it has been very successful and many people have downloaded this particular project and have enjoyed it thoroughly. But recently I had a question. One of the people had mentioned that their waste board actually was a different measurement as far as the distance between the holes. Now this particular person didn't really understand how to be able to take this slot and change the size of it. This is set up for 75 millimeters is the way I designed this and I actually combined it into the easel software so it wouldn't move. But some people have waste boards where those holes are a different size. In this case, the holes had a distance between them of 80 millimeters and this particular person didn't understand how to be able to change this measurement to be able to get it to the 80 millimeters. I thought it would be a rather lengthy email to try to explain that in words where I think it would be much easier to be able to describe it using pictures. The old saying, a thousand words worth one picture, or I should say one picture is equal to a thousand words, either way you want to say it. But that's what I want to do today is explain how to be able to take that file that I posted in easel several years ago and be able to change it and adapt it to whatever size holes that you have on your waste board. I opened up easel for the software that I had downloaded to the uh, Inventables project website. And this is the slots right here. And you can see them easier over on this preview window. And these slots are set at 75 millimeters. Well, this particular person needs to have these moved where the distance between them is 80 millimeters. I want to show you exactly how to go through this process because if you're not familiar with easel, it can be a little bit challenging. The first thing that I'm going to do is, for, is to keep this exactly the same. I'm going to come down to this window right here where you see that little arrow and click on that and I can duplicate this particular file. And that way I can work with this one and not interfere with anything else. To be able to move this, the first thing I want you to understand is I have these grouped together. So it moves as a unit. To do that, I use the combine feature. Now the easiest way to do this is to use this grid to be able to make the change. So I'm going to come over to this section right here and I'm going to change the size. Instead of having this where it's six inches across, I'm going to head and just for right now make this 24 inches. So now I have the grid pattern. And I want to move this over because that's the only area that we're going to be working in is right there. Currently, this slot and this slot are 75 millimeters apart. So in other words, 75 millimeters on center. I need to change this to 80 millimeters. Now you have to understand that there are many different manufacturers out there and each of their waste boards may have a different spacing on the different holes. In this particular que uh, question that I had, it was set for 80 millimeters and that's what I'm going to do. But this process will work for any measurement that you have on your particular waste board, whether it's 75 millimeters, 80 or whatever it happens to be. The first thing I'm going to do is ungroup this. But to do this, let's set this up right on the center point. So if I have this selected at the center, I can put this at 250 millimeters. And that puts it dead center on this line. Now, one of the ways that I could do this is just subtract from this 250, subtract 40 uh, millimeters and slide that over slide this over and it's done but right now it won't move why the reason being is this is combined together to be able to separate this again i need to use what's called the exploder app in easel and you come right over here to this section where you have the apps when that window opens just scroll down and you'll find the exploder app so i'm going to select it there are the objects that I want to be able to separate, and now I import that in. 
So here it is, right there. Now I wanna show you this one, when I click on just one of them, both of them are selected. We'll slide that up and out of the way. This one right now, when I select it, I'm gonna get both of them in the window. Okay, when I select one, it only selects the one. You notice how that works? These are now separated. So if I wanna separate this back to where it needs to be, let's go over here and put this as a group at the 250 millimeters where I had the other one. It doesn't have to be there, it just makes it easy. Now at this point, if I take and subtract 250 millimeters and I subtract 40, what do I get? That's gonna be 210 millimeters. So let's just select this one by itself and put it at the 210 millimeters. You also notice right now, it's at 212.5. And of course, if you have 75 millimeters between the two of them, all you need to be able to do is move it to the left at two and a half millimeters or 210 millimeters. And that is what I'm going to do. So 210 millimeters, it just slides over that little small bit we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So if I take that center point again of the 250 millimeters and add 40, what do you get? You get 290 millimeters. Well, if you look at this, it's at 287.5. That is a two and a half millimeter that I need to slide it over. So if I just click on this right here, set it for 290, I move that over and now, this is spaced 80 millimeters apart. To be able to keep this consistent so it doesn't move, I wanna be able to highlight both of these, come back up to the edit menu, and then I want to combine them together. When I do that, now it operates as a single unit, which means I can now come back over here and slide this right back into the bump stop itself, and guys, that's all there is to it. Now I do want this centered, so let's center everything. We center it just like that with this little icon, and now this is dead center in my bump stop, and the project is finished and ready to be able to carve. The slots that were set at the 75 millimeters, I went ahead and deleted. The next step in this process is to rename this particular workpiece. And I'm gonna change this one to where it is 80 millimeters. That way, when you download this particular file, if you need to have it at 80 millimeters, you can do so and just enter this file into the computer and you're ready to carve. Now, the other thing I want to be able to do is go back and change the other file. I'm gonna list it as 75 millimeters. And that way you'll have the choice on whatever your particular waste board is set up for, whether it's 75 millimeters or the 80 millimeters. And of course, keep this in mind, you now know how to uncombine this and to be able to use the, that Exploder app and be able to make your own on whatever measurement that you have on your waste board. Now this file, you saw me update it in real time. So it will be available on the Inventables project page so that you can download it. But hopefully, more importantly, I hope you learned how to be able to put that measurement or that slot on anything that you want. All depends on what the measurement is on your waste board. If it's 75 millimeters or 80 millimeters or perhaps it's something else, it doesn't really matter. Now you have the ability to be able to go in and look at that project and change it to whatever works for you on your waste board. I hope that you found this video helpful. I know it was very short, but I wanted to be able to answer this question and I thought this would be the best way to be able to do it. To be able to try to put all of this in words without having the pictures to go along with it, I just didn't think would work out real well. So this answers a specific question that a particular subscriber had and I'm sure that there's many others that didn't ask the question that actually do have the same problem.
So again, thank you very much for watching this video today. And if it did help you out, by all means, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And while you're there, hit the little subscribe button down there below in the notifications, because I'm always trying to answer the questions that you guys have. And I want to be able to help you be more successful in your shop, whether it's with the CNC machines or with the lasers. So for now, bye-bye. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.